Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of our almighty God, our heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, 
Yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as here are present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh Lord, open our lips. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the We will say the Venite together. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. We will say Psalm 70 responsively. O God, make speed to save me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who mock and deride me turn back because of their shame. As for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my help, my dear, Lord, 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please seat, be seated for the first pleading. The first lesson is taken from the book of the prophet Job. Or that my words were written down, or that they were inscribed in a book, or that with an iron pen and with a lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my sight, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will say the Te Deum in unison. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth that worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabbath, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine honorable, true, and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name, ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with them those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them, to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Thereafter, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our Gospel reading today is Matthew, and you may be seated for the reading. Jesus spoke this parable to the disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will, be, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Padre nostro, che sei nei cieli, Our Lord, for thy mercy upon us. Our Lord, save the Queen. And you're thy ministers with righteousness. Time, O Lord, O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy holy spirit. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son the King of all. 
govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rob, a clergyman in the Church of England, to the congregation of the faithful who gather in Rome, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. It has come up a few times in discussion in what form Paul's letters would have been communicated to the congregations they were directed to. And I suppose the answer is that it would be something like this. Some worthy of the congregation would be relegated the task of reading a letter as I am doing today. And so you will excuse the cheeky Pauline introduction to this small reflection. How would it have been done? A bit like this, then, in case you are wondering. You've noticed that I'm not with you this morning. Kyrene and I were participating at a funeral north of Rome this week, and there we came into contact with a family who subsequently tested positive for COVID-19. And so our doctor has asked us to quarantine for a period of 10 days following the day of contact to see if anything develops. And whether it does or doesn't, at the end of that time, that is on the 13th of November, we would take a swab test and hopefully re-emerge into society with our ducks all in a row and a negative result. I am happy to see a service proceeding in my absence. It's a mark of our willingness and ability to continue to provide ministry in difficult times. And I pray God's richest blessing on you all. Grace and peace to you, as St. Paul is wont to say. In another life, I was the chaplain to the Canadian Grenadier Guards in the city of Montreal. One of the tasks of the chaplain to the guards in Montreal was, of course, to preach at the annual church parade each Remembrance Sunday at Christ Church Cathedral in Montreal. A certain beardy portion of the cathedral congregation would take that particular Sunday off because they objected to what they call Gun Sunday and would miss out, as far as I was concerned, on the Ministry of Hospitality in the opportunity afforded by the presence of up to 250 young men and women, plus a whole whack of cadets and their families from a variety of backgrounds among Montreal's diverse community who really considered themselves in some way a part of the cathedral community and who, when they walked along St. Catherine Street, would look up and say to themselves that this was their church. That was one side of the equation. On the other were a number of people, including one honorary colonel, who came to church once a year expecting to hear about the young and glorious dead and the place of God in leading and championing the spread of the British Empire throughout the world. My well-honed ability to disappoint many different people simultaneously got a thorough airing on Remembrance Sundays in Montreal. The honorary colonel would inevitably ream me out about my sermon when we gathered in the officers' mess every year after the service. 
I'd need a second whiskey. I did have something to say, though, in the cathedral back in the 90s, and to this day, I give up a Remembrance Sunday sermon only reluctantly. I asked someone else to preach last year, but I did miss it and was looking forward to saying something about it this year because I do have something to say. And here, in this letter read by somebody else, I hope you'll listen. Most of our soldiers in Montreal, you see, were not involved in armed conflict. Canada has provided peacekeepers in various parts of the world in modern times, but has not been involved in as many conflicts following the Korean War under its own flag as other countries. And we did, in fact, have a regular army. A number of our reservists at the Guards were serving in my day in Blue Berets and with significant distinction in Bosnia-Herzegovina and at around the time I left the regiment were preparing to do the same in Afghanistan. Others had served in the role of assistance to the civil powers in times of natural disaster. I did not want to disappoint our soldiers. I trust I didn't. I hope it did, I did not disappoint the ordinary parishioners of the cathedral either, who would leave the church that day with choices to make about how they lived and the degree to which the conscious, conscious decision to engage and in fact to suffer in the midst of their generation, in the midst of their families, is the key to every forward step in their relationships, in their citizenship, in the effectiveness of institutions they worked with and for. It is the legacy that we leave even to the youngest members of our congregation gathered here this morning, to the children of this congregation and to the children visiting us this morning. And this would be the lesson. The decision to preserve self at all costs necessarily leaves others bereft and weakens the self we thought we would protect. The decision to stay away from the often ambiguous movements, conflicts, challenges involved in advocacy, in the protection of the weak, might well stem from a desire for simplicity and cleanliness. Let us do nothing which will have unintended consequences, in which mistakes will be made, in which we might be said at the end of the day to have misstepped. We are so used to second-guessing the soldiers, the administrators, medical practitioners, the social workers, the social engineers of past generations, and yes, we are amazed that some of them could have missed the mark as badly as they did. Above all, we must do no harm, we say, and so we do very little. And inevitably, we find ourselves in the situation of screaming out when the world is lacking interveners, lacking responsible adults to work on the basis of the best probability of forward progress that the world is an intolerable place for some folks. We are ashamed. We say, something must be done. But who will do it? In these stories told by young people, in these stories told of young people who left the relative comfort and stability of hearth and home and who found themselves in another place and a peril, there's a parable of what you, who are not facing the prospect of a life in uniform and under orders from other people in uniform, will nonetheless need to do in order to care for your city, your children, the stranger in your midst, the unjustly treated in your place of work. You will need to take risks. As much as your integrity is imperiled by the possibility that you will not own the entire process. Your integrity demands the exercise of such love on your part, 
a love which sacrifices yourself and your certainty. As much as your comfort could be lost, you will have no comfort in seeing the opportunity missed and squandered. What did you do in the war? In the war against injustice, in the struggle for equality, in the war against everything that makes your city an unfriendly place and leaves its people without community? Were you on the outside, even because of your scruples, or were you there with your lamp lit and charged with oil, ready to burn brightly in the challenge your decade brings to you? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, many of you know that I taught for many years at St. George's School, and here at All Saints we have a long and very happy tradition of welcoming the choirs of St. George's to take part in the Remembrance Day service. But in spite of schools being closed, in spite of COVID-19, in spite of distancing, we have managed, and thank you very much to James, for bringing a little group from St. George's who will now sing the offertory anthem, Ubi Caritas, by the Norwegian composer Ola Jelo. And as it's the offertory anthem, if you feel you can, please make a donation in the box in the central aisle. Thank you very much. <laughs> 